Hello friends, welcome back to this 8th tutorial uh, in our PowerShell uh, series and this time we will be discussing about the while loop. So while loop is, I mean the purpose of while loop is pretty much similar to what we have in the for loop but the syntax is a little bit different and uh, the major difference here in the while loop is that we have to uh, take care of the counter or the end condition, okay? So in this example, uh, let me just qu quickly wipe out the whole output pane. Cool. Okay. So if you see here, I declared a variable dollar answer equals to an empty string here. So we start the while loop by typing while followed by two parentheses. And within this parentheses section, we put in our condition. So Till the time this condition is not reached, uh, that lo the, the following code within the curly braces will execute. Okay, so uh, what I'm telling here is that to check whether the value of dollar answer is not equal to y in lower case. Okay, and if it's not y, then do what? Assign the I mean. Uh, prompt the user to enter yes or no and uh, assign it to the value uh, to the variable ans dollar uh, ans okay and read host gives us the functionality to accept user input okay and we have the other uh, commandlet write host which is which uh, displays only uh, to the console window it, it doesn't prompt you for anything okay read host will give will prompt this uh, line of uh, I mean this sentence and it will wait for your input okay so if I run this particular uh, script now you see it's uh, asking me to enter yes or no so if I enter no I mean I can keep on entering no 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 or, or anything apart from Y like M G H anything it will keep on prompting me but as soon as I type Y and hit enter you'll notice that this loop ends and it uh, I mean we are back to the prompt see so this is pretty cool and sometimes in case if you are using a condition like greater than or less than then you have to make sure and uh, uh, to, to keep a track of the counter so what I mean by that is if I delete the, this whole line of code and let's start with dollar i our favorite variable here so I'm, I'm initializing dollar i with a value of zero okay and what i want is to run a while loop till the time i is less than five okay and uh, what should it do it should print me the value of i okay and but if you see that if I I mean right now the I value is not increasing on its own because in for loop we had the I plus uh, plus in the end of the conditional statement that con that controls the increment of the I variable but here in the while loop we have to manually put that inside the while loop so that each time the loop, the, the loop runs, it, in, it would increment the counter by one. So we have to put dollar i plus plus here, okay, like that, so that it will uh, output the value of i and then increment the value of i by one, and then go back here check whether the i is less than five or not. So let's run this script and see what happens. Okay, cool. So i is zero in the first step, so it gives it outputs i as zero. It increments it by one. Increments it by one. Checks here i one is less than five. Yes, output that as well. Add one to it, so it becomes two. So st still less than five. Output that as well. And till the time it becomes four, and it increments the counter by one. So it becomes five now. So checks whether it's less than five. No, it's not. 
so it ends the loop here and in case if you want to uh, go till 5 I mean we, if you want to output 5 as well so we have to go here and simply put it less than equal to instead of less than only so if I run now so you'll see it checks less than or equal to so it's if it's equal to 5 it goes here and now uh, the next time it becomes 6 the, the, the value of i becomes 6 after incrementing so this condition is not met anymore and the, the loop ends okay so this is how while loop works and uh, it's actually on the programmer whether he wants to use a while loop or a for loop to uh, complete his uh, task and sometimes it's also situational Okay, so you have to make a decision on your own with what loop would be uh, appropriate to complete the task. Okay, so with this, I'm going to end this tutorial here, and next time we will be discussing another loop. That's the for each loop, which is pretty common now. And uh, till then, keep practicing. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop drop that in the comment section below. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button on my channel. See you next time. Thank you. Take care.